Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. Keep your back straight, neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring your attention to this bell sound. While you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Homage to the blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, before we start our practice session, as usual, we'll take a few minutes to become very clear about this practice. And it is very important for yourself to know out of this practice how your conventional life can change, what are the benefits that you can have and at the same time how it can help for you to develop your spiritual foundation. So when we go to the very basic level of our life one of the important thing we have to remember this whole life depend on food so there is a sutta called ahara sutta that uh, it's about food so that the food here not only that what we eat out of our mouth or whatever we drink out of our mouth. So the here food means for your eyes, eye object become a food for your ear, ear object become a food for your nose, nose object become a food, your body, body object become a food. And even for the mind, mental object become a food. So in that way, all the time, it's kind of like we are eating, eating, eating. Somehow, when it comes to our eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, somehow we are interfering with something and engaging with something and not only that, out of that engagement, we have deeper intention to fulfill our desires or the fun. We have deeper interest to find our satisfaction. So this is a current that always keeps us forward, push forward towards the life. Just imagine yourself. That's why it is very difficult for us to kind of like calm down, neutralize, and come to kind of like a very balanced state because we always, we always waiting to get something. So that itself, that desire itself is the power of the samsaric journey. 
So then in case if you come to a point to understand whatever you gain, there is no complete 100% satisfaction. Look this out of this eye, how many things we have seen through this whole life, even beyond our son, the, this life, eons by eons, if we got the eye and we're going to see these things like this, even for the ear, just imagine in this very lifetime, how many things that we heard believing, oh, I like this, oh, it feels so good, oh, I like this voice. And it mesmerized us, but at the same time, it, it already gone. And for the ear, for the nose, how many aromas, how many things that we smell through this nose. Just imagine yourself so far in your journey. And you went through many things smelling, oh, so good, so good, like that. But today, that's all gone. And out of this mouth, how much things you ate? Many, how you went to many, many hotels, you eat, eat from many hotels, many countries, many kind of menus, food from different, different places. And, but finally what happened? And but still today, sometimes, you know, after a few hours, you get hungry. That all gone. And for the body, sensation, how many people we associated? Hugging, gathering, holding, clinging to people, physically. The physical sensation means that the the people gathering from as we started from our parents, we felt so comfortable, safety with our parents from the beginning. And then it is start to expand to the brothers, sisters, friends, family members, neighbors. And then when we go to the schools and then we start to, to be with friends and sometimes unknown, People, you know, in the school, once you become, one they become your classmate, just holding hand, you know, putting the hand to shoulder and hugging them, you feel kind of like comfortable. And how many people you used to associate, then you had the partners and maybe you had lovers and you got, got married, maybe one husband, one wife, maybe not, in, uh, then... You go to another husband, another wife, you divorce and you get married again, maybe then again. And sometimes your, your husband or the wife there, but you're dreaming to hug somebody else somewhere, you know, so like that. It's, it's everywhere. And then again, your children and you're holding them, hugging them, and you feel so good about them. And then your granddaughters, grandchildren, grand grandchildrens, and then where the end? There is no end. And for the mind, how many things we used to think? Many many thoughts, always something, something inside us. There is no end. So then, first thing you have to understand: this is the mechanism. You have to understand that there, there is no end. Whatever arises in this very moment, the experience, you, to, to experience that, what happens, you have to burn inside. This you what you perceive. It, otherwise, you can't see it. You know. So then what happens, this eye, ear, nose, tongue, this body and the mind, 
you experience something means in that very moment it is start to change because without changing itself it can't experience if your eye need to experience something it need to go through a process otherwise you can't see that process itself mean the change and even that uh, all the object wise that whatever outside world that also change so then if the outside things change and out of the your eye it also change so out of this both i object change and i change and out of this both hmm, there is no way something that unchangeable things can arise there's no way so that is where that you can recognize this world is change because you know need something that from outside you have to recognize yourself if your body completely change why it is change like that so because it it depend on all the changeable things and from this outside things even look at the food we eat so that food itself change so that why it digest inside us just imagine if you eat anything something kind of like unchangeable you put it to inside your body what will happen so your body will throw it away you vomit it and otherwise it going to give a hard time to you maybe then then you have to do a surgery and take it out the simple truth understand so then so far whatever you experience that everything itself burn that burning process give you the moment of experience so that's why there is no end so even in the future wherever you go how many times you born in this world this is what you going to experience what you going to experience so even you go to heaven even you go to hell even you go come to human world in this human world you become a millionaire and uh, you have a very luxurious life and you have all the things around you whatever you want and still just imagine you have that around you you go to kind of like a, you know this uh, 3d animated world you create yourself just imagine you are the millionaire that you have everything around you and then just imagine you see through your eye whatever you want so then what will happen it going to change so whatever you saw it not going to be there with you it going to change even ear it going to change and with the nose it going to change whatever you eat just imagine you go to the best hotel and you had the best menu in the world and you eat it then within 48 hours what will happen that it doesn't mean that yo i ate the best menu in this world i did so good this food it going to be many many weeks with me no it's not going to be there within 48 hours it going to digest completely become dust so the people you have whatever the relationship remember that every 10 years that all the relationships completely change completely nothing you can keep the same no way within the 10 years whatever the relationships husband wife parents and children brothers and sisters friends or the neighbors or within the the 
the workplace anywhere whatever the relationship or with the student and the teacher whatever the relationship that you have you can have that relationship only for 10 years maximum that is that is the highest within that 10 years what happened it's completely changed so then the next 10 years even the even you are a husband and wife or the the brother and sister or the parents and children because those are the very close relationships partners completely you're going to have a very very different environment and the, the experience so that's how it is so when it comes to the mind ideas all the way always change so then you have to understand this we are kind of like a, something that black hole your eye is like a black hole your ear is like a black hole nose is like a black hole your mouth your this uh, tummy your belly is like a black hole whatever you you know <laughs> you put it to your mouth it's gone your body the same, it's like a black hole, you know. Just imagine in this entire universe, we look, we know that, that the black hole, once it once something go into that black hole, what happened? It disappears. Can't find anymore. No space, no time, you know, no any dimensions there. So the same thing like your body. So whatever the sensation you had. What happened to that? Where I go? It's already gone. And your mind in a certain way is like a black hole. Because whatever it's come to, it's, it's, it's vanished. You can't find it anymore. So you have to understand this principle. So then what happened? We are kind of like a moving and grasping and clinging and holding and gathering Oh, pulling things towards us. Just imagine with your eye, with your ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, you pull the universe to you, but when it go to inside you, there is nothing. So that is really, you are the black hole. <laughs> huh? Just imagine, you know, think about it. Uh, it is not a joke. <laughs> So how, how far you have to go like this? There is no end. So that's why today I'm going to tell you how you can transform this black hole to kind of like a very beautiful planet. It's a Milky Way, beautiful, you know, the sun, moon, planets, how you can transform that. And so start to start to the, the, the stop the, this sucking things, fooling things, holding things, grasping, clinging. Stop the desire. So how you can do the very spiritual practice. If anybody want to do spiritual practice, spiritual transformation, spiritual development, even in the conventional life, you can gain a lot of success. And try it. The very first thing that you have to do, start to do fasting. That's the key. That's the key. Just imagine, even the Buddha himself, six years he went through many, many vigorous ascetic practice. But you don't need to go that much. But if you can do that fasting, that you will see how things start to change. So you can do it and experience it for a certain level and your mind completely going to shift. It's not going to be this mind. So you can do it with the food first. Fasting. And 
you can start for one day 24 hours no excuse you can drink water no any food oh watermelon so good no 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 watermelon oh avocado so good no avocado don't eat any food just water just see you because you have to experience it to know how you completely change you you shift your energy level and sometimes if you try maybe if if you can understand it sometimes the the bigger bigger start to become a millionaire when the beggar start to do the fasting so that much this fasting has a deeper connection with the spiritual development look at the world what is the what one of the major the wrong thing in the world we have so much things to eat and we are so much eating 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 nothing wrong if you are hungry you have to eat nothing wrong with that but when you have the empty stomach you no need to eat having a hungry stomach and having an empty stomach two different methods but most of time we never experience this empty stomach because when when you have the empty stomach it effect for your whole nerve system just imagine anywhere in the world no any professional sports or the sport field or the singers or the dancers or any physical activities whoever do they never going to perform with the full of you know tummy it's a full of food to this much they never going to perform that way so then you have to think about so whatever your conventional life when you start to do something if you work if you read if you study if you meditate have a empty stomach try it you will see that doesn't mean hungry stomach no if you are hungry you have to eat so then to have a empty stomach you have to maintain it like uh, you know 2 3 hours before you practice you eat and then by the time your empty stomach going to become empty and uh, when you go to sleep go to sleep with the empty stomach and that will help you when you wake up very next day it's your your life completely going to change it's not going to be the same so that's why we think this life about oh it's about the stars oh it's about the black magic oh that person do this this person do that no our own behavior bring things towards us so practice this doing fasting little bit you no need to go into 3 4 days together no just one day try it and then every day as you know most of the scientists now agreed one meal per day and that then you will see for you you no need lot of food and you no need to have a kind of like a favorite things around you i eat only this i eat only that it's kind of like that so make it very simple don't spend too much time for eating make it very simple and do it properly so start with fasting so with the food first because you can practice it very easily and then the next one start to fasting with your eye 
Oh, I want to see this. I want to see this. Oh, I, I want to watch this. No. Just simply start to look at the tree. Look at the nature. And bring, bring that connection back to you. And that is where you, you start to recognize some kind of wisdom inside you. So we are always now that uh, we are mostly, most of us spend the time with the screen. Now the, the, this new children learning in school how to have a friendly, friendly relationship with the screen. Why? Because more than the humans, now we are engaged with the screen. So always there are a lot of people have difficulties when they start to watch one video. Netflix, some people whole night, one by one, one by one, one by one. Not only one movie, nothing wrong watching a documentary or a movie. You know, there are a lot of good things, nothing wrong. But sometimes you can't stop it watching. Your eyes keep asking, asking. Even you close your eyes, it has a deeper desire to see. So then when you go to sleep and even in your mind is not shut down, it is still watching movies. <laughs> You're not dreaming. And the Facebook, one video, two video, and it keep coming, 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 coming whole night keep moving your finger you know and watching watching videos tiktoks you know youtube when the one video finish then other one come auto play auto play and then you keep watching and then in front of this screen we become kind of like zombies now. So we start to do screen fasting. It's very necessary. So screen fasting. You don't watch any screen. Few hours, try it. Then you will see how difficult it is because sometimes you want to Close your eyes five minutes, then somebody call. Keep calling, 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 calling. And if you don't answer, and they get mad. And all the drama. Why you don't answer this? Why you don't reply to this? Like. So then you will see how difficult it is for you now. You know, it is not a joke. You have to think, you have to think about it. So screen passing. Start to do it. Then you will see there is some wisdom you can catch inside you. Sound fasting, very necessary because always hearing, hearing there are that this uh, headphones, voice cancelling headphones and you put it and whatever you want to play and you get lost in that there. And always want to hear, hear, hear something. Otherwise, you feel kind of like unbalanced when you're with somebody. Tell me something. Tell me something. Talk to me. Talk to me. I want to talk to you. I want to listen to you. Always listening, listening, listening. Your mind is like, a, remember, as I mentioned, it's like a black hole. Whatever you listen, you used to listen many things in the, the so far in your life. It didn't feel, feel your desire. And future to the same. So then find the balance. Don't listen to anything. Even the sound come, don't have desire to go with that sound. And then the nose smell. Always look for something nice. Something nice. Completely neutralize it. So the food we talk and always stop eating these nuts. 
and because you always everywhere you know when you sit on the couch next to it sofa next to that table everywhere nuts 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 and end of the day your mind go <laughs> go nuts <laughs> Why? Because you eat a lot of nuts, thinking you are, oh, this is very healthy, this is very healthy. So, you know, look at the world. More than any other time we eat, we have this all the, the pharmaceutical products, but no one going to escape from death. More than any other time, people na die nowadays because of the anxiety and the depression. That's become a kind of like a very dangerous killer. It's a stronger than the cancers now. So then you have to think about it. When you get depressed, you eat, eat, eat. Emotional unbalance, eat, eat, eat. So that's why go to the fasting. It will fix all. And stay alone yourself. Fasting from people. No touch. Try it. Then you will see. Even don't allow your children to come closer to you. Don't allow your husband or wife to come closer to you. Don't allow your partner to come closer to you. You take a conscious decision just to handle by yourself. And with the mind, you have no desire to find any kind of wisdom. That is enough because you already have that. You have no desire to, oh, this talk is so good, this dharma talk so good, oh, this sutra so good, this teacher, this guru, this monk so good, I want to keep listening, listen one more, one more. No. You completely detach from the desire to look for knowledge. So now, you come to the, the fasting state with your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind. Okay, this is the key. Listen very carefully. So now you think, I'm not going to open my eyes, so not going to see, not going to hear, not going to smell, not going to eat, not going to, to, to feel anybody or not going to think about anybody, anything. Now what happens? Once you start to do fasting, listen this very carefully, what happens? It start to bring very discomfort. It's very discomfort. It's kind of like, a, what is this? You don't feel kind of like a good. Something kind of like a go wrong. Discomfort, discomfort. And the inner voice and start to come and talk to you. What are you doing? Are you crazy? What? Why, why this happened like this? You used to do that. You used to do this. This food is so good. This is so healthy. Make you young. You look beautiful. And you have to watch this. You have to listen to this. Oh, you have to smell this. Oh, you have to be this with this person, that person. So like that, your inner voice start to keep talk. And the voice going to become so high. And even though that you can escape from this, all the sound come from outside world. Remember, when that inner voice start to talk to you, it is not easy. That's the challenge. So now you don't eat, you don't listen to anything, you don't have desire to smell, you don't have desire to see anything, you don't have desire to, to think about anything. And this inner voice start to fight and you feel discomfort, handle it. That is the success. If you can handle that your inner discomfort, you're going to become very successful person in the very conventional life and your spiritual life. No one can stop you. That's the key. 
So try it. But you think I'm not going to listen to anything or I'm not going to watch anything. And then you open one eye, start to look. That's happened. You know, and your ego start to come and bring many, many reasons to compromise. Don't give a chance. If you think for five minutes, half a day, one day, take that conscious decision. Even you die, be with it. And maybe that's going to become the liberation. So fasting is a key. It can work for most of us nowadays. Why? Because most of us nowadays into so much information, food, and the gathering. And in many ways, we have so much things. And that increase our desires to gain more and more and more. But remember, there is no end in the sansaric journey, eons by eons. Even if you keep watching, keep hearing, keep smelling, tasting, feeling, and there is no end. So, but that more than this outside, this inner desire, once you recognize that, one minute if you can hold and say no to that, the inner current, then it you can multiply it, multiply, multiply. One minute become two minutes, two minutes become four minutes. It strengthens your ability to hold discomfort. How much you can hold your discomfort without getting mad Disappointed, rejecting, resisting, fighting, and bringing some other things and compromising. How much you can hold your discomfort knowingly that you hold it to your conscious decision. That is the key that you have to develop. So try it. Then you will see. And all the, the wisdom is hidden there with that practice. So with that, let's get into practice a little bit now. So your right palm on your left and neck get straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture. So bring your attention to your body and a scan head to toes yourself. And say Sopatheva, oh, may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment, with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable, may my breath be more smooth, may no difficulties come to me, may all the success come to me. Also think for a moment, this is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalation and exhalation. So do nothing extra.
Bring your attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, the stars. Reminding yourself like this. With clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Being so up, real or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away, already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. Your backside, to your left side, and to your right side. Downward, and upward. To all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it, with the maximum effort to the highest, wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
Sri Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. Also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. Vittavata chami sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva numodantu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe bhuta numodantu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe satta numodantu sabba sampati siddhya Maya Dhamma Nudhamma Patipatiya Buddham Pujemi Dhammam Pujemi Sangham Pujemi Adhaya Imaya Patipatiya Jati Charavya Adi Maranam Mahabari Bunjissami Idhammi Bunya Kammanga Savakkaya Vahangho Tu Sabbadukkha Pamunchatu Bless you.